Introduction to Physics Part 2 Reference Physics for Scientists and Engineers with Modern Physics by Survey and Jivit Disclaimer Ang video ito ay ginawa ng may akda upang magamit sa pagtuturo ng agham at maging sandigan ng mga mag-aaral sa kanilang pag-aaral ng physics. Ang video ito ay maaaring may download ng walang bayad or for free sa www.youtube.com Ano man pong maling paggamit sa video ito maliban sa nasa saad sa itaas ay hindi po responsibilidad ng may akta. This video is not regulated by the institution. Any flows in this video is at author's imperfection. Bagamat ang course syllabus is regulated, supervised, and monitored by the institution, kung saan ang mga contents ng video ito ay nakabase, particular po sa video ito ay hindi na po regulated ng institution at nagsisilbing isang audio-visual material na lamang ng isang gro. Evolution of Physics Ang susunod na slide ay magsasaad ng mga pinagmulan ng physics at ang evolution nito through the years. Mangyari lamang pong matyaga nating tunghayan ang mga pagsasalaysay ng mga relevant events at important personalities na nag-contribute sa evolution ng physics. Sasamahan po kayo ng narrator na si David sa pagsasalaysay o pagbabalik tanaw sa mga nangyaring kaganapan patungo sa paglago, pag-usad at patuloy na pag-unlad ng siyensya. Physics, Evolution of Physics The earliest history of physics is interrelated with that of the other sciences. A number of contributions were made during the period of Greek civilization, dating from Thales and the early Ionian natural philosophers in the Greek colonies of Asia Minor, 6th and 5th CENT BC. Democritus, C.460, 370 BC, proposed an atomic theory of matter and extended it to other phenomena as well, but the dominant theories of matter held that it was formed of a few basic elements, usually earth, air, fire, and water. In the school founded by Pythagoras of Samos the principal concept was that of number, it was applied to all aspects of the universe, from planetary orbits to the lengths of strings used to sound musical notes. The most important philosophy of the Greek period was produced by two men at Athens, Plato, 427, 347 BC, and his student Aristotle, 384, 322 BC. Aristotle in particular had a critical influence on the development of science in general and physics in particular. The Greek approach to physics was largely geometrical and reached its peak with Archimedes, 287, 212 BC, who studied a wide range of problems and anticipated the methods of the calculus. Another important scientist of the early Hellenistic period, centered in Alexandria, Egypt, was the astronomer Aristarchus, c.310, 220 BC, who proposed a heliocentric, or sun-centered, system of the universe. However, just as the earlier atomic theory had not become generally accepted, so too the astronomical system that eventually prevailed was the geocentric system proposed by Hipparchus, 190, 120 BC, and developed in detail by Ptolemy, AD 85, AD 165. With the passing of the Greek civilization and the Roman civilization that followed it, Greek learning passed into the hands of the Muslim world that spread its influence from the E Mediterranean eastward into Asia, where it picked up contributions from the Chinese, paper making, gunpowder, and the Hindus, the place value decimal number system with a zero, and westward as far as Spain, 
where Islamic culture flourished in Cordoba, Toledo, and other cities. Little specific advance was made in physics during this period, but the preservation and study of Greek science by the Muslim world made possible the revival of learning in the West beginning in the 12th and 13th cent. The first areas of physics to receive close attention were mechanics and the study of planetary motions. Modern mechanics dates from the work of Galileo and Simon Stevine in the late 16th and early 17th cent. The great breakthrough in astronomy was made by Nicolaus Copernicus, who proposed, 1543, the heliocentric model of the solar system that was later modified by Johannes Kepler, using observations by Tycho Ubra, into the description of planetary motions that is still accepted today. Galileo gave his support to this new system and applied his discoveries in mechanics to its explanation. The full explanation of both celestial and terrestrial motions was not given until 1687, when Isaac Newton published his Principia Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. This work, the most important document of the scientific revolution of the 16th and 17th cent, contained Newton's famous three laws of motion and showed how the principle of universal gravitation could be used to explain the behavior not only of falling bodies on the earth but also planets and other celestial bodies in the heavens. To arrive at his results, Newton invented one form of an entirely new branch of mathematics, the calculus, also invented independently by G. W. Leibniz, which was to become an essential tool in much of the later development in most branches of physics. Other branches of physics also received attention during this period. William Gilbert, court physician to Queen Elizabeth I, published, 1600, an important work on magnetism, describing how the Earth itself behaves like a giant magnet. Robert Boyle, 1627, 91, studied the behavior of gases enclosed in a chamber and formulated the gas law named for him, he also contributed to physiology and to the founding of modern chemistry. Newton himself discovered the separation of white light into a spectrum of colors and published an important work on optics, in which he proposed the theory that light is composed of tiny particles, or corpus cles. This corpuscular theory was related to the mechanistic philosophy presented early in the 17th cent by Rene Descartes, according to which the universe functioned like a mechanical system describable in terms of mathematics. Arrival theory of light, explaining its behavior in terms of waves, was presented in 1690 by Christian Huygens, but the belief in the mechanistic philosophy together with the great weight of Newton's reputation was such that the wave theory gained relatively little support until the 19th cent. During the 18th cent the mechanics founded by Newton was developed by several scientists and received brilliant exposition in the analytical mechanics, 1788, of J. L. Lagrange and the celestial mechanics, 1799, 1825, a P. S. Laplace. Daniel Bernoulli made important mathematical studies, 1738, of the behavior of gases, anticipating the kinetic theory of gases developed more than a century later, and has been referred to as the first mathematical physicist. The accepted theory of heat in the 18th cent viewed heat as a kind of fluid, called caloric, Although this theory was later shown to be erroneous, a number of scientists adhering to it nevertheless made important discoveries useful in developing the modern theory, including Joseph Black, 1728, 99, and Henry Cavendish, 1731, 1810. Opposed to this caloric theory, which had been developed mainly by the chemists, was the less accepted theory dating from Newton's time that heat is due to the motions of the particles of a substance. This mechanical theory gained support in 1798 from the cannon boring experiments of Count Rumford, Benjamin Thompson, who found a direct relationship between heat and mechanical energy. 
In the 19th CENT this connection was established quantitatively by J. R. Meyer and J. P. Jowell, who measured the mechanical equivalent of heat in the 1840s. This experimental work and the theoretical work of Sidney Carnot, published in 1824 but not widely known until later, together provided a basis for the formulation of the first two laws of thermodynamics in the 1850s by William Thomson, later Lord Kelvin, and R. J. E. Clausius. The first law is a form of the law of conservation of energy, stated earlier by J. R. von Meyer and Hermann Helmholtz on the basis of biological considerations, the second law describes the tendency of energy to be converted from more useful to less useful forms. The atomic theory of matter had been proposed again in the early 19th CENT by the chemist John Dalton and became one of the hypotheses of the kinetic molecular theory of gases developed by Clausius and James Clerk Maxwell to explain the laws of thermodynamics. The kinetic theory in turn led to the statistical mechanics of Ludwig Boltzmann and J.W. Gibbs. The study of electricity and magnetism also came into its own during the 18th and 19th cents. C. A. Coulomb had discovered the inverse square laws of electrostatics and magnetostatics in the late 18th CENT and Alessandro Volta had invented the electric battery, so that electric currents could also be studied. In 1820, H. C. Ersted found that a current-carrying conductor gives rise to a magnetic force surrounding it, and in 1831 Michael Faraday, and independently Joseph Henry, discovered the reverse effect, the production of an electric potential or current through magnetism, see induction, these two discoveries are the basis of the electric motor and the electric generator, respectively. Faraday invented the concept of the field of force to explain these phenomena and Maxwell, from C.1856, developed these ideas mathematically in his theory of electromagnetic radiation. He showed that electric and magnetic fields are propagated outward from their source at a speed equal to that of light and that light is one of several kinds of electromagnetic radiation, differing only in frequency and wavelength from the others. Experimental confirmation of Maxwell's theory was provided by Heinrich Hertz, who generated and detected electric waves in 1886 and verified their properties, at the same time foreshadowing their application in radio, television, and other devices. The wave theory of light had been revived in 1801 by Thomas Young and received strong experimental support from the work of A.J. Fresnel and others. The theory was widely accepted by the time of Maxwell's work on the electromagnetic field, and afterward the study of light and that of electricity and magnetism were closely related. By the late 19th CENT most of classical physics was complete, and optimistic physicists turned their attention to what they considered minor details in the complete elucidation of their subject. Several problems, however, provided the cracks that eventually led to the shattering of this optimism and the birth of modern physics. On the experimental side, the discoveries of X-rays by Wilhelm Röntgen, 1895, radioactivity by A. H. Becquerel, 1896, the electron by J. J. Thomson, 1897, and new radioactive elements by Marie and Pierre Curie raised. Questions about the supposedly indestructible atom and the nature of matter. Ernest Rutherford identified and named two types of radioactivity and in 1911 interpreted experimental evidence as showing that the atom consists of a dense, positively charged nucleus surrounded by negatively charged electrons. Classical theory, however, predicted that the structure should be unstable. Classical theory had also failed to explain successfully two other experimental results that appeared in the late 19th cent. One of these was the demonstration by A. A. Michelson and E. W. Morley that there did not seem to be a preferred frame of reference, at rest with respect to the hypothetical luminiferous ether, for describing electromagnetic phenomena. In 1905, Albert Einstein showed that the result of the Michelson-Morley experiment could be interpreted by assuming the equivalence of all inertial, 
unaccelerated, frames of reference and the constancy of the speed of light in all frames, Einstein's special theory of relativity eliminated the need for the ether and implied, among other things, that mass and energy are equivalent and that the speed of light is the limiting speed for all bodies having mass. Hermann Minkowski provided, 1908, a mathematical formulation of the theory in which space and time were united in a four-dimensional geometry of space-time. Einstein extended his theory to accelerated frames of reference in his general theory, 1916, showing the connection between acceleration and gravitation. Newton's mechanics was interpreted as a special case of Einstein's, valid as an approximation for small speeds compared to that of light. Although relativity resolved the electromagnetic phenomena conflict demonstrated by Michelson and Morley, a second theoretical problem was the explanation of the distribution of electromagnetic radiation emitted by a black body. Experiment showed that at shorter wavelengths, toward the ultraviolet end of the spectrum, the energy approached zero, but classical theory predicted it should become infinite. This glaring discrepancy, known as the ultraviolet catastrophe, was solved by Max Planck's quantum theory, 1900. In 1905, Einstein used the quantum theory to explain the photoelectric effect, and in 1913 Niels Bohr again used it to explain the stability of Rutherford's nuclear atom. In the 1920s the theory was extensively developed by Louis de Broglie, Werner Heisenberg, Wolfgang Pauli, Erwin Schrödinger, P. A. M. Dirac, and others. The new quantum mechanics became an indispensable tool in the investigation and explanation of phenomena at the atomic level. Dirac's theory, which combined quantum mechanics with the theory of relativity, also predicted the existence of antiparticles. During the 1930s the first antiparticles were discovered, as well as other particles. Among those contributing to this new area of physics were James Chadwick, C. D. Anderson, E. O. Lawrence, J. D. Cockcroft, E. T. S. Walton, Enrico Fermi, and Hideki Yukawa. The discovery of nuclear fission by Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, 1938, and its explanation by Lisa Meitner and Otto Frisch provided a means for the large-scale conversion of mass into energy, in accordance with the theory of relativity, and triggered as well the massive governmental involvement in physics that is one of the fundamental facts of contemporary science. The growth of physics since the 1930s has been so great that it is impossible in a survey article to name even its most important individual contributors. Among the areas where fundamental discoveries have been made more recently are solid-state physics, plasma physics, and cryogenics, or low-temperature physics. Out of solid-state physics, for example, have come many of the developments in electronics, example the transistor and microcircuitry, that have revolutionized much of modern technology. Another development is the maser and laser, in principle the same device, with applications ranging from communication and controlled nuclear fusion experiments to atomic clocks and other measurement standards. Introduction Classical Physics Modern Physics Evolution of Physics Bibliography The Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia, 6th ed. Copyright 2012, Columbia University Press All rights reserved Bigyan po natin ng konting highlights, ano? yung uh, narration na ginawa napakaganda ng narration na ginawa ng Columbia Encyclopedia no? so balit uh, bigyan natin ng uh, konti pang additional information credits nga po pala sa Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia sa napakagandang narrative very comprehensive po ano? uh, sinimula nila yung pagnanarate sa physics evolution na uh, noong earliest history pa no way back nung sa kay Thales pa no? 
Si Thales po ay isang Greek philosopher ng uh, pre-Socratic era. Ibig sabihin ng pre-Socratic era, mas nauna siya kay Socrates. No? Ang kanyang main interest po ay uh, ethics, metaphysics, mathematics, and astronomy. Siya po ay notable sa mga ideas na water is the uh, arch or sa Tagalog ay ang pinagmulan, ano? Uh, water is the arch. So, yan po ang uh, kanyang mga uh, notable idea, no? Siya po ay pinanganak nung 626 BC to 548 BC. Uh, kung mapapansin po ninyo, parang pabaliktad po ang bilang. Nung nga pong BC, pabaliktad po, ano? Yung pong mas mataas na numero, eh, that will be an earlier uh, year doon kesa doon sa mas mababang numero. So, uh, siya ay uh, mga 78 years old. Ito po ay merong mapapansin ninyo, may mga parang question mark. Sa tingin ko po ito ay uh, typographical error o talagang sinadya na po ng uh, ating uh, Columbian uh, Encyclopedia. Slash po siguro yan kasi uh, yan po ay uh, may mga ano no may mga notation nung araw po kasi parang hindi pa rin na uh, itatakda ng uh, tunay na tunay katulad po nitong si Thales ng Melitus eh ipinanganak siya approximately 626 or 623 BC ano so yan po at siya ay namatay noong uh, 5th century 548 or 545 BC. So, yan po yung mga evolution din itong ating mga writings. Ano? Hanggang uh, pumasok kay uh, Democritus, si Democritus naman po ay Greek din. Ano? Uh, siya po ay ipinanganak 460 BC. Ano? Siya ay younger contemporary ni Socrates. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng contemporary? Kapag ka-contemporary, kasabayan, ano? Sabay na panahon. Sabay na panahon nila ni Socrates, pero younger siya, no? Mas bata siya kay Socrates, pero sabay silang uh, nag-develop ng uh, siyensya ng mga panahon na yan, ano? Uh, si Democritus, uh, ang nag-state that there are smallest uh, indivisible bodies from which everything else is composed. Kung iisipin po ninyo, no, uh, panahon pa lang ni Democritus, kung pinakinggan na yung Turing yon ni Democritus, eh baka hindi lamang po cellphone at wifi at internet ang meron tayo. No? Isipin nyo po, as uh, early as uh, 460 BC, may tao na na nag- uh, uh, sabi na there are smallest indivisible bodies from which everything else is composed. Eh, yun na nga po yung atom, ano? Yun na nga po yung atomic theory natin na tinatawag sa ngayon. Uh, subalit yung mga work po ni Democritus noon ay nag-survive lamang hanggang sa second hand reports. At ito po ay uh, nabaliwala sapagkat sometimes sabi ng mga contemporaries niya, unreliable at conflicting pa yung ideas. Pero ganun po katitindi itong mga, ano na, itong mga early Greeks natin, ano? Ganun pa lang kaaga na conceptualize na nila yung tungkol doon sa atomic theory. Okay, hanggang nga dumating nga po itong sina Uh, Plato at saka itong sila Aristotle ito naman po si Plato philosopher to sa Athens Greek ano? istudyante naman po niya itong si Aristotle na? so si Aristotle naman ay uh, Greek din born in 384 so mas bata na to kina Democritus ano? at siya ay namatay ng 322 at age 62, ano? 
bata pa nung naulila itong si Aristotel sa kanyang uh, ama kung kaya't siya ay lumaki sa guardian ano? hanggang nung 17 at 18 years old siya ay ipinasok sa sa Plato Academy in Athens ngayon nung namatay naman itong si Plato ay uh, nilisan niya ang Academy sa request ni King Philip II para matuluan naman si Alexander the Great yung anak ni King Philip so yan po ang mga pagkakasalansa niya ano? si Plato estudyante si Aristotel nung namatay si Plato ay eh, kailangan niyang iwanan yung Plato Academy at nirequisan siya ni King Philip no? the second para turuan yung kanyang anak na si Alexander the Great so si Alexander the Great estudyante ni Aristotel at si Aristotel naman estudyante ni Plato at magmula doon ano, nag evolve na nag evolve yung kanilang mga theories na may relasyon sa physics at natural science hanggang dumating na nga po itong sina Archimedes kung saan siya ikilala sa Boyan Sea eto naman si Galileo pinakita rin ano uh, dumating din ano ngayon yung pagdating niya ni uh, Galileo kung saan nakaimbento na siya ng uh, telescope eh diyan na nagsimulang nag-evolve yung uh, mga astronomy ano hanggang uh, nandiyan na nga si uh, Nicholas uh, Copernicus na siya yung nag-akda ng heliocentric model of the solar system. Ayun nga yung nagsasabi na the sun is the center of the solar system and moving around it are the planets. So, so yan po, yan po si uh, Nicholas Copernicus. So sa pag-inog ng panahon hanggang dumating na po itong si uh, Isaac Newton, no? Ayun naman ang nagpasok ng mga laws of motion, ano? Yung tatlong laws niya, no? At uh, nang dahil doon na imbento po yung uh, ating tinatawag na laws of gravity, no? Hanggang uh, dumating na po yung uh, si Robert Boyle yung nag-introduce ng Boyle's Law sa ideal gas tapos itong sina Ren Descartes na isang uh, philosopher na nagsasabi ng separation of mind and body at ng existence ng Diyos ano? so pagkatapos niyan hanggang kina Joseph uh, Lang Lang Lagangria o Lagrange yan, yung mga great mathematicians natin ano ipinakita rin po dito sa ating uh, narration ano? hanggang kay uh, Pierre Simon Laplace kung saan yung kanyang Laplace transform na tinatawag ay nagagamit sa maraming aspeto ng siyensya no? pagkatapos ito na uh, dahan-dahan na po doon sa thermodynamics side naman inimbento nitong si Joseph Black yung uh, caloric theory no? although itong caloric theory Uh, ito po ay medyo obsolete na uh, ito po ay tinuturo na ituro ko po ito dati sa thermodynamics pagdating po ninyo sa thermodynamics hindi po po pwedeng hindi nyo matatouch tong caloric theory no? na sinasabi po ay yung heat daw consists of a self-repellent fluid uh, called caloric that flows from hotter body to colder body yan po yung uh, caloric theory no? hanggang dumating na nga itong si na Joules si JP Joules no? James Prescott Joules no? at siya yung nagsabi na nagdisprove sa caloric theory at hanggang pagdating na po nitong si na Lord Kelvin kung saan katulong niya si uh, James Prescott Joule na nagdevelop ng Kelvin scale at hanggang ipinanganak na po yung isa sa mga paboritong-paborito kong theory na kinetic molecular theory. Ito naman pong kinetic molecular theory, no? sabi nga po dito, developed by Clausius and James Clark Maxwell. Uh, ito po ay nag state that gas particles are in constant motion and exhibit perfectly elastic collisions. 
pagdating po ninyo sa thermodynamics, siguradong sigurado rin pong itatouch po ninyo itong kinetic molecular theory uh, pagdating nyo dun sa ideal gas law, no? At pagkatap dito rin sa physics, matatouch po natin yan. Pagkatapos nga po noon, ay eto na. Inireintroduce na po yung atomic theory na noong pang sinasabi nitong si Democritus noong 460 BC na sinasabi ni Democritus na binali wala ng lahat hanggang dumating na po yung 19th century pero mo ang layo po no 460 BC hanggang 19th century ni reintroduce ni John Dalton at uh, with the collaboration of uh, etong si Einstein at magtulong-tulong na yung ating mga uh, magagaling na siyentipiko ay napatunayan nila yung atomic theory ano ng isang bagay ay composed of uh, composed of elements ano uh, ang atom ay composed of uh, neutrons protons and electrons ano yung neutrons daw at yung protons is can be found in the nucleus at uh, umiikot-ikot sa kanya sa kanyang orbit yung electrons. Yan po ay pag-aaralan natin ng buong giting at buong husay sa first part ng ating uh, physics. Ano? So yan pong atomic Turing yan ay napatunayan with the collaboration of uh, quantum physics pagdating na nitong sina Albert Einstein ano? na nagpatotoo doon sa relativity ano siya yung uh, nagpasikat ng E is equal to mc squared hanggang dumating na nga itong sim na max planck sa quantum theory hanggang dumating na po si Martin Cooper noong 1984 at naimbento na yung cellphone ano pero mo 1984 cellphone Uh, at ang kauna-unahang cellphone po noon ay Motorola Dynatac yan. yan po yung mga evolution ano? and from there naniniwala po ako na mas mararami po pong magagaling na scientifico sa panahon natin ngayon dangan nga lamang po at hindi na po ganoon ka distinguish or ka recognize yung kanilang mga ginagawa bakit po natin nasabi no? sapagkat noong pong panahon noon ay kakaunti pa po ang tao at uso pa po yung writings kapag ka po ikaw ay nagkaroon ng writings at naipublish ay ikaw po talaga ay sisikat at uh, buong mundo mailalatala ka na ikaw ang nakaimbento ng ganito ikaw na ngayon po sa sobrang dami na ng invention ay parang baliwala na po ano? baliwala na po na makaimbento ka sa ngayon kasi parang pangkaraniwan na lamang po sa buhay ng ating uh, mundo sa ngayon ang makaimbento kagaya po niyang wifi na yan sino po ba nakaimbento yan nagkikir pa po ba tayo ay di ba hindi na yung nga pong uh, cellphone eh, hindi na natin kinikir na naimbento yan ni Martin Cooper okay. so uh, yung telephone nung araw si Alexander Graham Bell alam na alam natin na siya ang nakaimbento pinag-aaralan pa natin yan ano? at yung uh, telescope si Galileo Galilei tapos si uh, ang nakaimbento ng uh, tinatawag na ilaw okay? so yung uh, incandescent uh, lamp. O, oh, di ba? So, alam natin yun, ano? kabisadong kabisado natin yun dahil nakasaad yun sa libro ng ating science book. Okay? Pero, sa ngayon, kung sino yung naka-invento ng sabihin natin, ha? Halimbawa, sino po ang naka-invento ng inverter na air condition at inverter na A refrigerator, hindi na natin pinibigyan kasi pagalingan na, no? Pag naimbento tong Android, susunod si iPhone, meron na naman. Si Android, meron na naman. So, 
nababaliwala po. Nababaliwala na yung mga uh, magagaling na invention. Uh, they never they never care about the accolades anymore, no? Dati masyadong uh, masyadong uh, malaking karangalan yung makaimbento ka. Ngayon, may Bluetooth na mouse, may Bluetooth na speakers, we never care. Sino nakaimbento ng tinatawag natin na microwave oven? We never care. Sino nakaimbento ng tinatawag natin na front loading na washing machine na paglabas eh tuyo-tuyo na hindi mo na isasampay? We really never care. So ganyan po ano, ganyan po uh, nag-evolve ang ating uh, siyensya. Dumami na nang dumaming inventor, dumami na nang dumami hangga't dumating ang panahon na tanggap na lang tayo ng tanggap ng technology na hindi na natin kinikilala kung sino ang mga nag-imbento. O yan po ang evolution ng ating uh, P6 ano. So uh, meron na nga po tayo ngayon na tinatawag na ano na amphibian car, matagal na po 'yon. At meron na rin po tayong tinatawag na mga electronic cars ano electronic uh, uh, vehicles. Ayan. Uh, malaking invention na rin po yan sa ngayon. Ano? So, yan po ang ating uh, collaboration at ang ating narratives dito sa ipinigay na pagsasalaysay ng uh, Columbia Electronic Encyclopedia. Credits po sa Columbia Electronics Encyclopedia sila po ang may gawa nito napakaganda ng pagkakahanay lahat ng mga importanteng events nandyan na po basahin na lamang po ninyo ulit and for our final word for this video if God brings you to it He will bring you through it with this I have to terminate our discussion for this part 1 of the introduction to physics at ibalik po natin ang lahat ng parangal at papuri sa Diyos amang makapangyarihan sa lahat. To God be the glory.